What's up, Eco Nerdlings? In this podcast, we're going to be discussing nuclear energy and improving energy efficiency. So, nuclear energy is the using of fission to split large uranium atoms into smaller products and releasing tremendous amounts of heat energy, which are used to make steam, which in turn turns a turbine to create electricity. So the energy conversion that's occurring here is a nuclear energy to electrical or heat energy. The benefits of nuclear power are that it's pollution free and it's extremely efficient. Some of the costs associated with nuclear energy are the risk of accidents or the spread of radioactivity which can cause diseases such as cancer, the transportation and disposal of the radioactive wastes that are produced. It also produces a ton of thermal pollution. So after three or four years in a reactor, spent fuel rods are removed and stored in a deep pool of water contained in a steel lined concrete container. So they're not going to last forever. So we do have to do something with them. This is one of the options that we do with our spent fuel rods is we place them in a lot of water so they cool down. Another option are that after those spent fuel rods are cooled considerably because it takes a long time, they're sometimes moved to a dry storage container made out of steel or concrete. So what exactly happened to nuclear power? Because it used to have a lot of hype associated with it, and now you don't really hear too much more about it. Well, after more than 50 years of development and enormous government subsidies, nuclear power hasn't really lived up to its promise for several reasons. Number one, it's a multi-billion dollar construction cost. Anytime we want to build some type of nuclear power plant, it's going to cost multiple billions of dollars. It's also higher operation costs and more malfunctions than we expected it to be. Poor management as well. So you need really good leaders and good workers at those nuclear power plants. And unfortunately, a lot of times the management that they had at the nuclear power plants wasn't exactly the best. There are also a lot of public concerns about the safety and more strict government safety regulations that would be employed for nuclear power plants. So for all of these reasons, that's why nuclear power didn't really take off as much as we had first expected. So one of the case studies associated with nuclear power is the disaster that happened at Chernobyl, and that was a power plant accident. It was the world's worst nuclear power plant accident and it occurred in 1986 in the Ukraine. The disaster was caused by a poor reactor design as well as human error. And by 2005, 56 people had died from the radiation that was released from Chernobyl. And unfortunately, about 4,000 more people are expected to come down with thyroid cancer or leukemia as a result of the radiation that was released. So looking at some of the trade-offs of coal versus nuclear energy. Well, coal is in ample supply for the time being. It has a high net energy yield, and it has a very high air pollution as well. It does release a lot of carbon dioxide emissions. It has a high land disruption from surface mining. It has a high land use, but a very low cost with huge subsidies being provided for the people that work in the coal industry, or at least allow people on the land to mine the coal. As far as nuclear power goes, it's an ample supply of uranium. It has a low net energy yield, and it has a low air pollution. Any pollution that actually results from nuclear power is mostly from the fuel reprocessing. It has low carbon dioxide emissions, and has much lower land disruption from surface mining. It has moderate land use, but it has a very high cost, and it even does have high, huge subsidies. So, just to give you a little bit of a reference, a 1,000 megawatt nuclear power plant is refilled once a year, whereas a coal plant requires 80 rail cars per day. So, some other concerns with nuclear energy are that terrorists could attack nuclear power plants, especially those that are poorly protected pools and casks that store spent nuclear fuel rods. So those terrorists could actually wrap explosive around small amounts of radioactive materials that are fairly easy to get and detonate those bombs. If they detonated a bomb that had radioactive material in it, it could contaminate huge areas for very, very long amounts of time, up to multiple decades. 
And when a nuclear reactor reaches the end of its useful life, its highly radioactive materials have to be kept from reaching the environment for thousands of years. So it's not just something we can forget about. We actually have to take care of this and house it properly for thousands upon thousands of years. Currently, at least 228 large commercial reactors are employed worldwide. 20 of those are in the United States. And some of them were retired in 2012. Many reactors are actually applying to extend their 40-year license to 60 years. And aging reactors are subject to embrittlement as well as corrosion. Building more nuclear power plants will not lessen the dependence on imported oil and it will not reduce carbon dioxide emissions as much as other alternative fuels can. The nuclear fuel cycle does contribute to carbon dioxide emissions, and wind turbines, solar cells, geothermal energy, and hydrogen contributes much less carbon dioxide to the emissions released. So scientists actually disagree about the best methods for long-term storage of high-level radioactive waste. There are many different methods proposed for getting rid of this nuclear waste, which range from burying it deep underground, to putting it in the ocean, to shooting it up into outer space, or burying it in an Antarctic ice sheet. Any way you slice it, there's a lot of debate about what we're going to do with the waste that results from those nuclear power plants. So what are some ways to improve energy efficiency? Well, we can save energy in buildings by getting heat from the sun, super insulating them, and using plant-covered green roofs. We can also save energy in existing buildings by insulating them, plugging leaks, and using energy-efficient heating, cooling systems, appliances, as well as lighting. So one of the methods em employed is called the straw bale house. The straw bale is a super insulator that is made from bales of low-cost straw covered with plaster or adobe. And depending on the thickness of the bales, it's actually stronger than standard construction. We also have what we call living roofs. These are roofs that are covered with plants that have been used for decades in Europe and Iceland. These roofs are built from a blend of lightweight compost, which is a mulch and sponge-like material that holds water. So about one third of the heated air in a typical US home or building escapes through closed windows and holes and cracks in the house. Well, I hope you learned a little bit about nuclear power and how to conserve energy. If you'd like to rewatch this video or any others for AP Environmental Science, please visit my website at www.nerdlingscience.com. Well, this is the Queen Nerdling signing off for now. Stay nerdy till next time.